Welcome Scrum Masters to Review Meeting Facilitation. This is the first video in section number five and this section number five is the second of two sections on facilitation. In the first section, section four, we covered facilitating the planning and retrospective meeting. The second section, section five, covers facilitating the review meeting and team agreements. And previously, Section number two was about mindset and heart set. You created your mental model of being a scrum master in that section. And in section three, you created your daily, weekly, and monthly rhythm. And all of these sections are building on each other. When you're getting into facilitation, you have your mindset ready and you have your daily, weekly, and monthly rhythm. So let's get to it. This is the first of two major videos in this section. The next video is going to be on facilitating team agreements. So the nitty gritty of this video, is we're gonna talk about what to do before, during, and after the review meeting. And the outcome is you will have a clear understanding of what you need to do to facilitate the sprint review meeting. So here's what you need to do before. Now the outcome of the sprint review meeting is quite complex. It has many items, so I recommend reviewing this while you're doing your preparation. So here's some of the things that need to happen during the review. The product owner determines what product items, backlog items have been completed. The development team demos what it has done. The development team shows the product increment. The product owner discusses the backlog and its state and estimates completion time. For example, if there is a release plan, the product owner will discuss the release plan schedule. And the Scrum team collaborates on next steps so that the review provides input into the next planning meeting. How much time is taking in the sprint review? Four hours for a four week sprint, two hours for a two week sprint, and one hour for a one week sprint. Before the meeting, decide who the meeting attendees are. The product owner and the development team of course are required. And then there are typically many stakeholders and many other people from other teams that show up at the sprint review. The sprint review is often the meeting at which most people show up because they want to know where the state of the software is. You want to communicate with the product owner about the product backlog. Can the PO estimate completion dates? Is there a release plan? And can the PO speak to the release plan and when the completion dates are? Is the backlog ordered and ready to start working for the next planning meeting? You need to start preparing your materials and equipment the projector, easel pad, pens and paper, sticky notes. You want to review your review agreement, which we'll be talking about in the next video. Review your observations journal, what has happened in previous review meetings. Make an entry in your expectations and emotions journal. And then of course, prepare PTAS. So PTAS is the absolute core of facilitating all of the meetings. And I'm sure you can now prepare the PTAS for the review meeting. Watch out for excessive preparation on the part of the team. The review is an informal meeting, it's not a showcase. So if you see the team getting together and preparing slides, preparing something really elaborate, just coach them on what the sprint review meeting is about. And then also coach the team on demonstrating completed work. You don't want the team to be showing up with screenshots and PDFs. You want the team to actually show the working software. Now let's talk about the during. Number one, start off with purpose, time, and agenda. That's really important and it's particularly important in the review meeting because you have so many people from outside of the team who may not be familiar with Scrum or with the way the team works. Review the planning agreement if necessary and review team norms if necessary. And then I've talked about using the burn down chart as an optional component of PTAS. For the review meeting, since there are so many components to it, I strongly recommend using the burn down chart or some other way to make sure that you're going to hit the review time box and still complete all of the agenda items. Now, during the meeting, you need very strong facilitation of what has been done and not done, particularly for new teams. And I recommend that you make a highly visible list on the whiteboard on an easel pad. Teams that have just started with Scrum 
will not be familiar with getting to work complete at the end of every sprint. They may not be familiar with their definition of done. So make sure that you invite the team and the product owner to have a very careful detailed discussion about what is done and what is not done. Get agreement on what team velocity is if you're using it. You'll know what was done and what was not done and so you'll know what the velocity is for that sprint. Make sure that you provide sufficient time to cover all of the review agenda items and make sure that the review does not turn into a feature brainstorming session for stakeholders. This is a collaboration session and you are looking for feedback, but this is not a story writing workshop. I have seen some reviews turn into exactly that, where stakeholders are shouting out things that they want and the product owner is taking notes about that. That's not what the sprint review is about. Now closing the sprint review, the S&P task is extremely important. We need to know exactly what PBIs were done and what PBIs are not done. In what state is the product increment? Can people outside of the group use the product increment? If there are a server or a download that they can get access to the product increment. In what state is the product backlog? What are the estimated completion dates? What is the state of the release plan if there is one? And what is the scrum team going to do next? So the review provides input into the next planning meeting. So it is very important to do the S&P task, the summary, so that everyone is absolutely clear about the state of the team and the product. That's the goal of the sprint review meeting and the summary plays a critical role in making sure that everyone is 100% aligned on these issues. So let's talk about some problems with the review. The team disagrees on what was completed. This very often happens with new teams. They're not familiar with their definition of done, or they're all familiar with the definition of done, but they have different interpretations. So remember that the PO makes the final decision on what PBIs were complete and what PBIs were not complete. The software crashes as it is being demoed, and so the team can no longer demo working software or the wrong version of the system is available. You know, the team hasn't put the right thing on the right server and they discover that they're demoing the wrong thing. These are all issues that you as a facilitator will need to be aware of and you'll need to support the team in showing what it has actually completed. Let's now talk about after the meeting. Check to make sure that the backlog and the task board are updated. You need to do a sprint closeout, particularly with new teams they might be a bit sloppy on the state of the task board. The user stories, if they're using user stories, may not be marked as being done. All of the tasks may not be marked as being done. The backlog may also not show the state of the system. The completed stories may still be on it. Incomplete stories may not have been split. So you need to coach both the product owner and the development team on making sure that everything is visible on the task board and the backlog during and after the review. You need to post the velocity in a highly visible area if you're using velocity as a measure. And you need to post an updated release plan if you're using that and updated completion dates in a highly visible area as well. The next step is to watch the second major video in this section, agreements facilitation and complete the five homework assignments. So to summarize, we've worked through the before, during and after of facilitating the review planning meeting and we've identified potential problems and solutions. So get ready to watch the next video on facilitating the agreements conversation with the team. Enjoy.